I'm not really an expert in air rifles, but well, actually I'm not an expert in anything, but a lot of people send uh, requests. Uh, why don't I talk about air rifles or pellet rifles? And I have in the past. I think I made at least one video. But I thought I'll kind of update things and I'll show you my favorite air rifle. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but I thought I, I'll start for the viewers, especially the young viewers. And I love getting your messages. Um, those of you that are just heading out into the woods and and uh, just starting to discover 22s and things like that and air rifles which are very practical. I shot thousands of rounds of, out of these different um, pellet rifles. This is a Slavia 624. Uh, there are lots of other air rifles. Like I said, I'm no expert. This one is here because I've used it for so many years. This was one of my first rifles. I don't know what the muzzle velocity is. The, it's a .177, so it's a 17 caliber. So you're talking about a very small projectile, but these are surprisingly effective. Slavia, so it says right here, made in Czechoslovakia, as you probably know, that's turned into, I guess, the Czech Republic or Czechia and the Slovak Republic. I hope I have those names right. Uh, anyway, very fine rifle. If you find these on the used rack, the 624 is so reliable, so small, anyone can handle them. And it's surprising what you can accomplish with this. So I thought I'll show you that one first just because it's sort of part of my permanent collection. Uh, when I finished with, this, with that rifle, I decided I needed more power. I bought some Crossmans and I have some of those. Uh, some of them are quite interesting. One I converted into a 22 rimfire, uh, but maybe I did that on Patreon, I can't remember. Anyway, this is the 620, so sort of the big brother to the 624. And this was my standard go-to pellet rifle for years. The velocity is significant and I had nothing but success with the 624. And actually, it's, it, it really is almost identical, except in size, to the smaller rifle. So Slavia 620, and if you see it on a used rack, I, I would buy it right away. Now, these are break open, so that's, I don't want to cock them. I guess I could. It, it doesn't take much force, but anyway, once you cock them, I guess it's, you, know, you have to do something. But um, that's where you load the pallet. I kind of have to hold it open here, and you can see where the pellet goes, I hope intuitively. And I mean, essentially when you look at these, you're looking at a bicycle pump, right? This is just compressing air, this arm. And all, I'm sure all of you know that, but I get all kinds of things from different people. Say what's what. So that's how it works. You're compressing air. And then when you pull the trigger, this, this volume of air, which has been compressed, um, forces the pellet down the barrel and it like i said significant velocity surprisingly effective weapons and these always had very fine sights i never had any trouble dealing with anything with these slavias um, excellent there are dozens of manufacturers now and some are from china uh, this one uh, th this was a weird deal but I, I ended up getting this rifle for twenty dollars it says made in China. Now, you can compress this air in the chamber by breaking the barrel. This one has a different device. Uh, this is how you compress the air, which is kind of neat. So it's a, uh, it's a ram. Again, I, I, I can't speak to the right terminology. There, you will know better than me. I just shoot and own these guns, <laughs> which sounds funny. And I, I do learn some things, but not all things. Anyway, you load the pallet here and then um, bring this closed so it's, it's nicely sealed. And then this arm is captured by a spring up top here, that spring. And this is an incredibly accurate, I mean for a $20 rifle I couldn't believe it. Um, I noticed all of them, as you probably know, work better with a little bit of oil from time to time. And there are special oils that you can buy. and. Uh, you know, there are fellows I know that are complete experts with air rifles. 
and I think we did a show on the pneumatic rifles. Those are the pre-charged ones where you use uh, equipment, you know, for diving and you're filling cylinders that are pre-charged with air. But just something about my personality, I guess. I like the ones where I don't need any scuba diving equipment. I just have a rifle and I can get it to work wherever I am. Um, that's probably simple-minded, and I don't mind being simple-minded. So this, this, I like this system. There's another one. Uh, there are a lot of German um, air rifles. I think they're very popular around the world just because the laws are more favorable for air rifles. Perce people perceive them as more harmless. They're actually not as harmless as they may seem. And there are some now that are being made that shoot 45 caliber bullets and... <laughs> Um, some of you send me videos of hog hunting with air rifles, just remarkable. Anyway, the side cockers where the levers on the side this way or this way. Again, I don't know the terminology, but I'm encouraging you to acquire some of these. They're just fantastically useful, most of them very quiet. Not as quiet as my CCI Quiet Rimfire 22, most of them. But, you know, you've got a lot of mechanical mass. Um, actually, I have a German break open air rifle where you're there is no spring you're compressing air with what amounts to a, like a shock absorber just with a rubber seal I mean that's probably just confusing the issue the, this is great though I mean if you can get one of these for $20 um, then just forget about who made it they're, they're fine I'm, I'm sure most countries can manufacture good air rifles and then um, we're reaching my favorite air rifle and I had one far better than this, and then did the foolish thing and sold it. I don't know why, but this is the BSA standard air rifle. And whenever I say BSA, uh, I have to catch myself because I always think of British small arms, and then I get a whole bunch of messages saying it's actually Birmingham, not British. So BSA, this is called the standard air rifle. I don't know how old this is. It's old. and. Uh, I don't know why I find these things so fun. Probably because I've had such great success with them. And they're just in a class of their own. So loading is right here. You rotate this lever, you can see, right there. And insert the pallet. Now, I was lucky, and this is a 22. Uh, that's why the projectiles are on the table. I, and I could have projectiles for like darts and all kinds of things, but I try not to do that during filming. Anyway, this is a 22, so you obviously I wouldn't be in this position, but I could be. But you put the pellet in there and close this. That would be the last thing you do um, before firing this BSA standard. Um, first thing you would do is actually lower this and cock this. Now I cheated and uh, did some things so that that I'd be able to move this for filming safely. Anyway, you just unhinge it from the front here. There's a little button and compress the gas just like the others I showed you and then snap it back in place. Then rotate this open, insert the pallet, close the pallet. What, what I like about it is everything's in line here. You can see that there's, there, there is no hinge. There's nothing to go wrong. And once in a while, I put a drop of oil here. It's, the trigger is adjustable which is very unique here. And this stock, I don't know, this stock is not a factory stock. I don't want to go gun on gun, but sometimes I have to do that. Obviously, this is some kind of a custom stock, uh, but even that I'm not sure about because so many different rifles were made. And if we can um, show this original catalog, um, you can see the different models, number one, number two, and so on. Uh, this one is in 22 bore, and that's the 177. This is the one I had. Actually, you know, I've had a number of these. But this this one was great, and then I ended up selling that. So right now, all I have is this 22. Uh, but if you can, you know, lock into one of these, I'll spin it around, and you can see somebody went to a lot of effort. It reminds me of one of those Swiss parlor rifles. And it certainly is accurate enough to be any kind of parlor rifle. And someone um, took the 
risky measure. I, maybe it's not risky if putting a scope base here. And with a scope, this, I mean, you can hit anything within air rifle ranges. And even though the penetration is better with a .177, um, I still prefer the 22 just for the larger projectile. You can see that they put dovetails to replace the original metallic sights, which I try to find, but no luck. So, yeah, this is easily the air rifle that I like the best. It's a, it's a favorite, and again, very hard to find, but if you can find one in decent shape, this one's actually in excellent shape. Uh, you've got a uh, a sig significant power, a decent projectile with the 22, but I would buy a .177 in a heartbeat. So anyway, that probably covers some air rifles maybe you haven't seen, and especially like I said, I really enjoy knowing that younger shooters are finding the channel and heading out and going with their parents and trying to get used guns and things like that. I think that's a I think that's a fantastic, well, better than sitting in front of a screen anyway. So this is one of those categories of guns that are, I think, mostly unregulated, maybe in some countries, but, you know, not on this side of the Atlantic so far. So, yeah, that's about it. And like I said, the BSA, very, very good, it's surprising, but all of them effective. The Crossmans, the Daisies, whatever you come across, give them all a try. Uh, they're, they're very interesting mechanisms. Anyhow, that's it for today. Please uh, subscribe. Uh, we need help on the channel. And if you can join us on Patreon, all the better. And uh, sometimes we post on Instagram, not as often as we want to. And stay healthy, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.